Hi guys, welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Saturday the 1st of December 2018 and I'm so glad that you're joining me today to talk about some knitting. Once again, podcast intros are so hard, I don't know why I'm failing. Uh, one possible explanation is that I haven't had any coffee today, but you guys, I have a coffee. So let's have some and hope that uh, this ordeal somehow improves. Talking about coffee, first of all, <laughs> my new coffee machine which I named Candy is here and I'm so so happy about that. I don't know if I mentioned it last week um, but I've been fighting with my old coffee maker for a couple of months if not actually most of the year. And I finally got a new one because my old one decided to stop working on Black Friday, which was perfect. And then, of course, as soon as I had ordered a new machine, the old one started working again. But anyhow, I have new and shiny and tasty coffee with me. So let's hope this will improve and we will get through a podcast together. So um, this is a knitting podcast, in case I didn't mention that. Um... Usually I start talking about finished objects, but I don't have any, so after some knit-along talk today I will go straight into works in progress. I have some spinning, I have a little bit of stash acquisitions, and then possibly life in general, if it is not already splattered in between the podcasts, which is what happens most of the time. Talking about that... <laughs> I hope you can hear me okay. Um, I'm not really sick. My boyfriend Kai, he has been really, really um, taken down by the man flu very badly this week. He's been sick for pretty much the entire week. And you know how men are when they get sick. Sorry about to any men who are watching this. I hope there are some because I would be sad to see only women watching this. But that is a total tangent. Anyways, Kai has the man flu. I'm holding on for dear life. Um, I think I'm surviving without catching it, but I do have a bit of a tickle in my throat. So if you can't hear me that well, I'm sorry about that. This is just the best I can do. So anyhow, um, all of that aside, first of all, we have a group on Ravelry called the Happy Knitting Podcast Group. Very, very innovative, I know. Um, so that's where you can find us on Ravelry, which is a great place to be if you want to kind of see what's going on and join in the knit-alongs. We have two knit-alongs at the moment. We have the um, tea and ice cream sock knit-along and we have the happy sweater along. All the details can be found there. There are also um, some prizes, um, some from me and some from a maker on the way. So I will talk about them relatively soon. Um, but those are the two knit-alongs that we are doing. Like I said, you can find all the information there and you can also join in on um, Instagram using the hashtags Happy sweater along and tea and ice cream socks cow. Um, so I think with that out of the way, um, all the, um, that I talk about on the podcast in terms of my editing, my projects, my yarns and so on, you can find all the information about that on my um, project page on Ravelry, which I think is especially relevant because these days I'm knitting with a lot of yarn that either doesn't have labels or I've lost the labels or the makers' names have changed, like, this seems to be a bit of a theme lately, and then I need to do a lot of editing, which can be quite tiresome, because I'm not great at video editing, and it just takes a lot of time. So I'm saying it in advance, um, all the things that I'm talking about will be found on my project pages, um, and my username on Ravelry is Vipfi, which is W-U-E-P-F-I. So before we get into the knitting, what am I wearing today? I am wearing my Jolie sweater. Um, this is knit out of a Wollmeise pure yarn. Um, just two skeins, which was a great project. And I love wearing this because it just feels slightly more dressy than some of my other knits. And with the lace on top, it's just a really, really fun knit. And I wear this a lot. Which kind of brings us onto the topic of the sweater episode, which will happen Maybe today, maybe this weekend, I just don't know. Anyways, that aside, let's talk about what I've been knitting on. Like I said, no finished objects, which feels really, really strange because I usually manage to finish something. But yeah, I've just I've been doing a lot of knitting. Um, and I feel like lately, because I have quite a few webs, 
lately I have been, I've not been monogamous in terms of my knitting, but I have kind of more, had more focus on single projects. So I would maybe knit on the sweater for three days straight. And then I would knit on socks for a day. And then like, whereas usually in the past I would knit on everything every day. So this way I don't have that many whips. I don't have that many FOs to show you, but I feel like I'm making progress and I am knitting relatively large projects as well. So let us start with my sweater that didn't really look like a sweater last week. And surprise, it now does look like a sweater. The yarn that I'm using is by Maike of Scuderia Fine Yarns. Um, these three colors in her Pinta base. Uh, Pinta is a mix of, um, I think it's a merino wool. Let's see. Yes, merino, um, silk and rami which is a really, really interesting yarn. I talked about this in quite a lot of detail last week, so I don't want to bore you with it. But it's a beautiful fingering weight yarn that has a sheen to it, which I think is to do with the silk mostly. It's beautifully applied and it's just a really nice um, tonal, almost solid yarn dyed by Maika. So I have these three skeins, which of course will fade um, together. And what I am knitting on is the um, Mai sweater, M-A-I sweater, by Leni Hoy. Um, she's a designer from Finland. Um, this is my first garment that I'm knitting of hers, but she has quite a lot of designs that I really like. So um, the Mai sweater gives you the option to knit a fade, but you can just knit it in one color as well. So this is where we are, you guys. I have faded into the second color. I'm kind of doing my own things in, ter in term of, terms of the color placement. Um, the whole problem started when my gauge was completely off. Sorry about the needles banging on the table. Um, I was supposed to have, I think, 24 stitches per 10 inches, uh, 10 centimeters, 4 inches. But I only have a gauge of 20 stitches per 4 inches. So that meant that I have now split four of the sleeves a little bit earlier. I did the maths, so it should all come out perfectly well and I have tried it on and it works. But that means I have kind of modified the pattern, but it is still a nice sweater. And after splitting for the sleeves, which I have done now, I've done about, I don't know, six inches. And you can see I have faded in the second color. So now I'm just knitting straight with my second ball of yarn until I have about 20 to 30 grams left, which I will then use for the sleeves, together with the leftovers from the first color, and obviously I will do the same for the third. So uh, I'm really, really liking how this is turning out. Again, I worked on this a lot, and then I kind of forgot about it in the last couple of days. It's also very crinkled just from being in a project bag, but I do really, really like it, and because this is on such a loose gauge, this is really, really drapey. I was actually worried that it was going to be too gapey and holy, but I think actually this is going to be very wearable because of that. Like, it just falls beautifully, especially when it's not wrinkled like it is right now. And it would be a perfect sort of like a light top slash sweater to wear at work, at home. Not like when it's super cold, but it would just be a really nice layering piece. So I'm very, very excited about this and I'm also very happy to be knitting with this yarn because that's been in my stash since the beginning of the year and yeah, I just really, really like this yarn so I'm happy to be working with it. So that is my my sweater. I am using 3.5 millimeter needles and dropping stitches. But this is where we are in that. So this is a super simple stockinette project which I, I think all of this has been knit while watching the series Purge on Amazon Prime which isn't the great series, greatest series to be honest, but we watched it when Kai got sick and he had a day off for his birthday. We both did, so we just binged watched, binge watched the series within like two days and this is when this sweater happened as well. And I have really haven't touched it since. So I need to get back to that, but that is where we are on my garment number one. I seem to have developed a pattern these days where I always have two sweaters on the go. And that's really good because I already want to cast on more sweaters, so I don't see that number of sweater whips decreasing anytime soon. 
Next up, talking about garments. You guys, I am so excited to finally have made progress on my Emma yoke. You guys, I thought this sweater was never ever going to get finished. And now we are so close. So this is probably just as squished. That's the thing with garments in bags. Um, but this is the Emma Yoke sweater by Astra Tooting of Knit for Passion. And no, my ends are not woven in. Um, I've talked about this a million times because I've been knitting this for what seems like forever. But it's a really beautiful top-down um, yoke sweater. The yarn that I'm using is Black Hill Wool, um, which you can order off a Danish website called Garnutsalk. I linked to all of this last week's in last week's podcast, so if I don't do the whole editing thing again, check out last week or go onto my party pages. But um, yeah, it is a very light fingering weight, almost lace weight yarn, which is perfect for color work. Um, and you guys, I have finished the body. And I have finished the first sleeve. And these are full length sleeves, so I'm very, very proud of myself for that. I have made so much progress on this. So like I said, I finished the body. I was where the stitch marker is here last week. Knit down the body, did some two by two ribbing. As with all of my garments, I do my own shaping and length and ribbing and all that. And never follow the designs. So in case I didn't mention that, that's exactly what I did with this one. Did my own um, decreases after the best. Did my own decreases for the sleeves. I I don't know. I know what fits me, so I don't really see the point in following a pattern, which undoubtedly is fine. Undoubtedly, it's a well-written pattern. I'm not doubting that at all. I just like know what I like, so I do my own thing. And you guys, the key to reigniting my love for the sweater is one thing. Let's show it to you without dropping all the stitches. You guys, I'm using a tiny needle for the sleeves. So I've been wanting to try that for a while now because I don't mind knitting sleeves. I usually knit them on magic loop. I know that I would not enjoy knitting them on DPNs. But I was like, well, why don't I just give it a go? Because these are quite long sleeves with a relatively tight gauge and a fine yarn. So this might be a good opportunity to try. So these are 12 inch needles. I ordered some Adi ones just because that seemed to be the only option that was on Amazon Prime. <laughs> I think these are the premiums. They have a yellow, uh, like a golden, golden brownish cord. And I'm pretty sure that means that they are Adi premiums. I'm not a huge fan of Adi needles all of the time, but these work really well. And it means that obviously you can just knit round and round and round um, on your sleeves rather than having to do magic loop. And quite honestly, in the beginning, you guys, I didn't really know if I liked it because it does slow me down a little bit. I'm so used to knitting magic loop. And especially when you just pick up for the sleeves, you know, you have the garment very close to you. It tends to be a little bit fiddly, but then I just got into a rhythm and it was really, really relaxing. So I think I did. I don't knit faster this way, but I just I just enjoy the process. It's just really really relaxing, kind of like sock knitting, and um, I just place a stitch marker where I do my my decreases, and it's just super easy. So I actually really really enjoyed it, and that is why I finished my first sleeve relatively quickly, and I feel like this is going to be done very soon. The only thing that I was worried about when ordering these was that. I thought I wouldn't be able to try on um, the sleeves without having to transfer the stitches onto a bigger needle in order to, you know, put it on. But it turns out I can fit my hand through here, so it's a little bit fiddly, but I can actually um, try on the sweater with the sleeves and check out the length and all of that without having to change needles. So that is super handy and I'm really happy about that. So. This was sort of my test because I just wanted to order one needle. These are three millimeters, but I could definitely see myself getting the same for 3.25 and 3.5 millimeter needles because they, they are the ones that I usually use for um, garments. And yeah, I really, really like it. So who would have thought? I definitely didn't. And I like them. And if you're wondering, I know that there are Adis that have like different lengths, um, like the sock. Is that the sock wonder? I'm not quite sure. I think it is. 
but these are exactly the same length in terms of the two needles but that works fine i have no issues with that and i don't like super fiddly stuff i don't really enjoy uh, nine inch circular needles for sock knitting so that's why i didn't really think i would enjoy this but i do so yeah just thought that might interest you and if it does let me know let me know how you do knit, how you knit your sleeves i feel like people have such different preferences for sleeve knitting like dpns Tiny circulars, magic loop, I would really like to know and I don't know, maybe you'll get some new ideas as well. So that is where we are with this um, and you guys, I tried this on and I love the sweater. Um, this is quite oversized, um, I kind of had a feeling that it would be very oversized but even with its oversizedness um, I did some decreases and that just means that the sweater it seems to fall really really nicely. And this is one, 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 once again one of these constructions where you do short rows in the back while also doing um, raglan increases after the yoke. Which honestly I think is a bit of a pain, but they produce such a great fit. So this is going to be a super relaxed sweater. I really, really, really loved, um, loved it when I tried it on. And I don't have my swatch to show you, but the swatch of um, this yarn when I washed it it changed completely. Like right now it looks pretty nice, but um, after washing it just blooms and develops this halo and it's just beautiful. So I really, really can't wait to wash this entire garment and yeah, I really like it. And it was a bit of a slog for a while, but that makes me just so much more happy now. So that is, I think, enough talk about my Emma yoke. And let's just dump it back in its sweater bucket and have some more coffee. Next up, very quickly, I am still working on my stripy socks. These are my um, mustache yarn socks um, in the Kama Sutra colorway, which I talked about plenty of times again. I just really, really, really love the, um, this yarn. And um, these colors are just so bright and I love them. And I picked it up yesterday, um, again, I kind of leave things and then I work on them very, very <laughs> intensely. So I was, I think, in the green stripe yesterday when I picked them up and that's also what it was like when I showed these to you last. And then I was watching TV and phoning and hanging out at home and yeah, this is where we are. So I think somewhere here is going to be the heel, um, but I'm just going to knit the tube Hopefully finish it relatively soon, put the heel in, and then these will be done. So very, very excited about these. I can't wait to wear these. And as usual, I'm doing 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle. Um, that's my usual formula. And because I get asked quite frequently what needles I use, um, my two favorite sock needles are um, higher, higher sharps, which are these ones with the blue cord. And I have the other ones here as well, so I can show you. And these ones, which are the um, Chagu Red Lace. These are my two favorite needles for sock knitting. Um, the high hi higher highers are, I think, a tiny bit slicker, also in terms of their cable. So some socks, um, sometimes I switch them onto higher higher when just the fiber doesn't really slide across the Chagus. Like, I think it's just... These are a tiny bit more versatile, but then this um, can kink up, whereas the Chagu Red Lace is a bit more of a, like a solid cable, which I do really enjoy as well. So I feel like I would really enjoy these for garment knitting as well, but I don't really want to start another expensive needle craze hobby because I buy enough stuff as it is and it works. So, But those are my two favorite sock needles. Um, and in terms of my garments, I knit a lot with, I only knit fixed circulars, um, I knit a lot with my fixed uh, knit pro zings, just because I started kind of collecting them in different sizes and they're really good for color work. But I also use um, knit pro novas, I also use um, Adi lace, um, the Adi red lace needles are actually really nice for shawls and garments as well, I just don't like them for socks. So there you go, random, random um, tangent on my yarn and needle preferences. 
Um, lastly, today I um, for knitting I have to show you my um, Mystery in Mittens by Ellie of Scandia. So if you do not want to be spoiled, please look away. And I was really glad that someone last week commented that they actually um, looked away because they're knitting them. Because I never say and know if I just say these things for years and years. Like, look away if you don't want to see this. And no one ever looks away. But apparently there is a good reason. So yay. So um, I'm going to show the um, Hula Nut Mittens by Ellie of Scandia. Um, I'm making a mess here. But the yarns that I'm using are um, Rauma. And um, this is their two ply, their Gamma Serie, um, which is slightly more twisted than their Fino, and I really, really like using this for um, mittens. I really like this yarn in general. I got a sweater's quantity of this to knit my third Damia Kalopa at some point, and yeah, it's just a really great yarn. So, I have finished all the glues that are out there right now. I think it is three glues, and ta-da! Aren't these so cute? I love these mittens. So this is the front and you can see uh, this was clue one where you had different options. I went with the most traditional one which was this star motif. The second clue went kind of to the end of these trees and now the third clue is just perfect with the reindeer and the house and uh, there's like stars and a tree forming and I have an idea what's going to be the fourth clue although I may of course be wrong. But I just love these. Um, this is the back. Um, yeah, I'm just really enjoying them. To be honest, I can definitely sense a second mitten syndrome coming on. But I think once I finish the fourth clue, which I assume will be the top of the mitten, she said um, that there is going to be a bit of a break before the last clue comes out, which again, I assume is going to be the thumb. So I think once I finish the first mitten, I will not wait until the next clue, but really cast on the second mitten, because second mitten syndrome is strong, you guys. But yeah, this is where we are. I'm knitting the longer version. Did I check my gauge to see if I need the longer version? Of course not. But um, it pretty much comes to the end of my pinky finger right here, so I think this is actually the right size for me. Um... In terms of needle sizes, Ellie has you go up a needle size after the cuff, which I didn't do. I usually need slightly smaller sizes for her mittens, just in terms of the gauge. And these are, they're not too big, but they are very roomy, which is actually really nice. So this is where we are with the Yule Nut mittens. And yeah, I really just love these. They're so kitschy and festive, and I love them. So that is it in terms of my knitting and these are the child views that I'm using. I tried to show them before to you without giving away the mitten because obviously I don't want to spoil you guys. Um, so let's move on to some spinning because I've done some. I finished a braid of spinning, or oh, a braid of fiber, a braid of yarn, I don't know. I had a braid of fiber. <laughs> let's start the right way around. And the fiber was a new to me blend, um, which is a Shetland Wool and Silk Blend by um, Das Montjaf with Sabrina. And I've never spun Shetland with silk and I really, really, really enjoyed it. I don't really enjoy spinning Shetland by itself because it's just very, very woolly and a little bit too rough for me on my hands. But in combination with the silk, it was amazing. Especially because if you've spun before with um, a merino silk braid, both the merino and the silk can split quite easily and it is i like spinning merino silk but i don't love it because you have to be very careful whereas um the silk combined with the shetland was just really grabby and really easy to spin and i really enjoyed it so um this is the yarn that i got it's about 280 meters which is a decay weight on i've got like 125 grams or something except it feels much thinner which confuses me but this is the sort of thing that I was aiming at because I knew I wasn't going to make socks out of this. So I wanted a nice sort of squishy yarn and I spun it into singles and then did a chain ply, which gives you a three ply yarn. You can see it's not super even, but that is totally fine by me. I just wanted to keep the colors together and there's a lot of colors in here. But I really like how this turned out. Um, and what I want to do with this, I want to knit a um, shawl out of this. Um, my sister, um, my youngest sister, who is 17, 
When she was here, she took some yarn and I gave her um, another shawl to knit. Because she's not a huge knitter, but she likes knitting sometimes, just to have something to do with her hands when she's watching a series or something. And um, the pattern that I gave her to knit was the um, Diving In shawl, which is a garter stitch. Um, it's sort of like a triangular shawl, but um, you decrease on one side and increase on the other. So it gives it a really, really nice shape. Instead of just like, you know, increasing one way, you kind of increase and then decrease. So it just gives you a really nice shape. And that is the shawl pattern that I knit a lot when I started to get into knitting. Into knitting things other than socks, that is. So I knit, I think, like three or four of these shawls and gave them away as presents. And I really, really like them because they're very mindless. And when I cast on the one for my sister and showed her how to do it, I think it's like a four or six row repeat. I thought I really would enjoy knitting one of myself these days, or maybe a couple, because lately I've just been craving some easy garter stitch shawl knitting, which I haven't done in ages. So I think with this hand spun, that would be perfect. And I have quite a few skeins of hand spun that kind of need to be turned into shawls. So I totally want to do that. And maybe, what do you think, you guys? Should we do a hand spun shawl knit alone? Let me know if you'd be interested, because I know that not everyone is a spinner and not everyone buys hand spun yarn or has friends who give them hand spun yarn. So I'm thinking the interest might not be huge. But let me know. Um, we could just have a really relaxing, maybe like over Christmas, like have a relaxing garter stitch or whatever shawl you want. But I'll have a relaxing garter stitch um, shawl on the go using some hand spun and it would be really nice and simple knitting when you're having Christmas dinner and spending time with family. Consider him, obviously, only if you're celebrating Christmas. If not, you can knit along anyways. Um, how do you feel about that? Because we could totally do that after the um, sock knit along ends. So the sock knit along ends on the 15th of December. So we could just cast on. Let me know what you think, and if you're up for it, I'm happy to open Macau. It can be super informal. If not, I will probably do it anyways. But the chance of me doing it will be higher if you join in. So that is my spinning. Um, I am using a sp um, spinning wheel by Bliss. Um, it's the Bliss wheel. Um, actually, that was the wrong way around. I am using a spinning wheel by The Woolmakers. Um, my wheel is called Bliss and I have the single treadle version, which I love to death. I got the wheel almost three years ago and I, I love it so much and yeah, wouldn't want any other wheel. So that is what I've been doing and I'm already spinning up another braid of hair fiber. I don't really have that much time for spinning, but right now I really enjoy playing around with fiber. And um, start, um, like when I got this one, I also got another couple of braids from um, Sabrina, was Montag. And one of them was a Cheviot um, braid, which I think is a very common fiber in the US. And basically I've never seen it here in Germany. So I was really, really curious. I'm spinning that up right now as well. I'm really enjoying spinning with different fibers and it's turning out really well. So I'm having a lot of fun. Actually, I'm having so much fun. I'm kind of right now considering placing another order, so. We'll have to see about that. Anyways, spinning done. Um, let's have some coffee and then talk about my acquisitions. Um, so, where do we start? I've got this beautiful bundle um, package that arrived yesterday. And um, the I got the yarn from a friend of mine. Um, who has the Valkyrie Fibers um, online shop. And I usually say I never order from the US because I usually don't. But <laughs> she made it possible and her yarn is gorgeous. So I decided to take her up on her offer and get a skein of self-strapping yarn. Good now. Why is... Did you hear that? Siri just started talking to me. Shut up, Siri. That's my, my work phone is right there. Um, anyways, um, so um, I got a beautiful ball of the self-striping yarn in a colorway that I cannot um, pronounce because I am not a Lord of the Rings person. I'm so sorry. I don't get Lord of the Rings. 
Um, anyways, but I really, um, this is from her Middle Earth series and it's in her matte sock base, which is a 75-25 merino nylon base. And I will show you the colorway because I cannot pronounce that. I have no clue. Come on camera, you can do it. There you go. And isn't this just beautiful? I, I love this. I'm so enamored with this screen. It is so special, I kind of don't want to knit with it. But then it may be my Christmas cast on, Christmas Eve cast on. But then again, I may find another 10 things that I want to cast on on Christmas Eve. But this will be a beautiful self-striping pair of socks. And you know my love of self-striping, especially at the moment. So yeah, very, very excited about that. But then um, Lauren is an absolute star and she spoiled me rotten. So um, she also sent a sock blank because she knows I love sock blanks. So um, what's really, really cool about this sock blank, it's a double stranded sock blank. And you guys, look. It says wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Whiny? I think this is a TARDIS thing. A, um, what's the word? What's the word? Where's the label? Is it all of time and space series? Oh yeah, it's a Doctor Who thing. And unfortunately I have no, no idea about Doctor Who. I'm very, very sorry, Lauren. I have absolutely no clue what that means. But I'm sure most of you out there, it seems like everyone loves Doctor Who. So you can explain the reference to me. Wibbly wobbly timey whiny. Whiny? And um, anyways, it is a beautiful, beautiful, moody and dark sock blank, which, oh my gosh, I love it so much. And that was such a generous gift from her. Um, this is also in the same sock base. So it's in merino nylon uh, blend. And like I said, it is double stranded, which means that you can knit two exactly matching socks from this sock blank. And I used a double stranded sock blank once before, actually this year. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I think um, these will get cast on very soon. Um, and I will have to fight Kai over who gets these socks because I think these would be his colors. But I also really would like them for myself. We'll see how it goes. Maybe there's a tiny bit of purple in here and Kai is super, super sensitive and he does not want anything pink or purple. So that might be my only shot. And um, what I will be doing with this is, um, I know that some people try to knit from double stranded sock blanks from the blank, like two at a time. And everyone told me that that usually ends in a tangle. So last time what I did is I wound it off into two little balls and then knit the socks two at a time from there. Obviously you can then knit them one at a time as well if you prefer. But that worked really well, so I think I'm going to do that again. And oh my gosh, so generous. Thank you so much. And because that wasn't enough, she also sent me this beautiful, super cute um, pouch, which I just, I, I just love it. Like this is just so my aesthetics. It's so happy and with the sprinkles and then the lime green zip, it's just adorable. It's a sort of like triangular thing that I could never do myself. It is lined. How do you do that? Like this is such a tiny thing. How can you do that? It is beyond me, but it's really cute and I really love it. And she said her friend makes these. Let's see if I can tell you. Um, one of her knit night friends, so I'm assuming he cannot buy these, but they're so cute, so yay. Um, and that arrived yesterday, which was Friday night, when I got home from work relatively late, so that was amazing. So yeah, that is it in terms of my acquisitions. I feel like now my voice is all warmed up as well, so that's great, um, now that the podcast is over. But anyways, that's what I've been up to. Um... In terms of life in general, not that much to write home about. Um, like I said, Kai was sick this week, but on Monday, which is actually when he got sick, it was so sad. It was his birthday and we had both taken the day off um, because he wasn't feeling well. We took it relatively slow, but he loved his socks. I think he, he has worn them nonstop, which means that by now they are totally gross and disgusting. <laughs> but he loved the socks that I knit him, which I showed you last week, so that was great. And they fit perfectly. Um, we went out for breakfast and actually to a museum on Monday, but then from then, from then on kind of took it slow. Um, I worked mostly from home this week, so that was good. 
because like I said, man flu is the worst for not only the man, but everyone around uh, surrounding the man. Sorry if I'm talking in gender stereotypes. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's what's been happening. Um, nothing super special. Um, we're going to take the weekend slow. Um, last night we decided to watch um, Suits again. The series Suits is our favorite series and we've both watched it about a million times. I think most realistically, I think we said it was four times now that we've watched it together. <clears throat> um, and Kai was so miserable last night. I felt so sorry. So that was the only thing that cheered him up. So what we're going to do today is binge watch um, Suits and I will do all the knitting and I'm super happy about that. Um, and then tomorrow in the afternoon, I will actually drive back to where I grew up because I have some appointments there on Monday. So I will try to somehow marry that with working as well. And next week is going to be a travel heavy week anyways. So I hope by then everyone is feeling well again. And yeah, that's what's going to happen next week. Um, I should be back on with the podcast on the following Sunday. Um, if not, you will always hear it first on Instagram. So that is the best place to follow me if you want to see what's going on. So I think I have rambled on enough and I will let you guys go. So thank you so much for watching and listening to my crazy yarn talk and knitting talk. And I could just talk about knitting for about 24 hours straight, I think. Maybe we should try that sometime, sometime but then who would want to listen to that? Anyways, have a beautiful weekend. I hope you have fun with your knitting. Maybe you have some yarny advent calendars to play with. If so, I am very jealous of you guys. Um, anyhow, have a great weekend. Have fun with your knitting and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.